So now that you've learned a bit about the middleware infrastructure, let's talk about some of the key app components in Android. And I gave you a quick tour of, of these a minute ago, but I'll go into it in more detail right now. So if you were, if you were to ask someone, what are the architectural elements in Android, uh, they would tell you, oh, uh, they're activities, services, broadcast receivers, and content providers. And some of these components are glued together with things called intents. And this is what's used as the building block for all the different things you would build in Android, whether you're building the user-facing part, or some background stuff, or some data access stuff, or some notification stuff, and so on and so forth. And as we'll see in a second, they all follow certain patterns, and they all have life cycle methods that manage the way in which they come into existence and how they shut down and so on as they run. Probably the most fundamental abstraction is something called the intent. And an intent is basically just a message or an event that describes either an action that should be performed or an event that's already occurred. So it could be one of those two different things. Android uses intents as glue to simplify the integration of apps that reuse existing components. And this is really, really, really cool. Um, one of the things that makes Android so much fun is the way that you can create all these different reusable components and then glue them together using the Android event architecture, which is this interesting thing called the Activity Manager service. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. So what's an activity? An activity provides a screen, which can be further subdivided by things called fragments, which users can use to, uh, or users can interact with, to do a single focused thing. So typically, they give you something that the, ac that the application wants you to be able to do. Enter data, see the results of data, you know, browse through stuff, whatever. So activity is kind of the main user-facing capability. And it's easily the most common type of Android component. Every app needs an activity. Uh, you don't necessarily need a service. You don't necessarily need a content provider. You don't necessarily need a uh, broadcast receiver and so on. But you need an activity. And that's typically what displays the, the main screen when you get into it. So here's like a Maps app. Here's a Weather app. I'm not sure what this is. This is the Image Download app. Um, so the activity is the thing you use to interact with stuff. So you can think of activities as basically being the heart of all the Android apps. Broadcast receivers are essentially event handlers that are responsive to events that can be sent throughout the Android system. And we'll see that this is an interesting feature that's been kind of improved over time because they were a gigantic security hole for many years. But uh, they've tightened it up, and it's a little bit more restricted than it was originally, but it still plays some important roles. So what you can do is you can have activities and or services. We'll talk more about services in a second. And one or more apps can interact by broadcasting intents that are then handled by zero or more broadcast receivers. And what that's really saying is that there may be nobody who cares about the particular intent or event. Um, or there might be someone who is. Or there may be multiple entities that are interested in this. There might be multiple broadcast receivers. So I'll give you a very simple example here. Um, one of the features that Android has is a way of being able to determine when the battery is getting low. And there's a couple of different things that might care about the battery getting low. Uh, one part of the system that cares about the battery getting low is you, the end user, when you're, say, in a phone call and the battery is running low, you want to be notified somehow that the battery is getting low because you might need to end the call or plug your phone in or, you know, turn on battery optimization uh, settings to preserve and extend the life of what battery power remains. So the phone app might care about this. Well, there's other parts of the system that might also care about that. Uh, probably the thing that keeps track of the, the power management policy that you have selected, right? So once the phone battery reaches a certain percentage left, there might be some policies that need to go into effect. Like you might need to dim the screen, or you might need to you know, turn off certain services, or shut down stuff that's consuming memory, or kill background apps, or whatever. And so their point is that there could be many different parts of the system that care about the fact that the battery is running low. So there's a battery service that keeps track of the power left in the battery. And when it 
crosses a certain threshold when it goes from, you know, 21% left to 20% left, it sends an intent. And that intent goes to something called the Activity Manager Service, which is really kind of a silly name because it does more than manage activities. But one of the many things it does is it handles these broadcast intents. And then the Activity Manager keeps track of everybody who's registered for, you know, battery getting low, a battery getting low event or intent. And then it sends those, uh, that sends that notification on to all of the interested broadcast receivers who care about this. There's also services. Services run in the background to perform long-running operations, which often involves accessing remote resources like downloading content or you know, synchronizing state from your local contacts or messages or files with some database somewhere, like your, your calendar entries need to get synced with your Google Calendar and whatnot. A background service, there's a couple of different kinds of services. One is called a bound service, and the other is called a started service or an unbound service. And I'll talk more about those in a second. So a bound service, which is this guy, has a life cycle that depends on the components that create it, which are typically activities. So if an activity wants to interact if one or more activities want to interact with some background service, but only as long as anybody cares about it, then they bind to a service the first time you're bound, the service is created, and then the subsequent times when a clients or activities bind to it, then an increment of a reference count is done in the service. And as long as those clients are still using that service, that service continues to live. So you can think of that model as kind of, I, I call this the the Horcrux model of service life cycle. So if you're familiar with Harry Potter, a Horcrux is basically something that is a way to keep you know, the evil uh, Lord Voldemort alive as long as there's one Horcrux left, right? So same thing works here. As, as long as there's some client that cares about the service, it remains in existence. When the reference count drops to zero, when the last Horcrux is destroyed, then the service goes away. So that's what's called a, a bound service. And there's also this thing that's called a started service or an unbound service, which is just started, as the name implies, and then is, it'll keep running, doing stuff, uh, as long as nobody shuts it down explicitly. And so that's a little bit more flexible because you don't need to have anybody actually alive to keep it going. But it's also um, a, battery, uh, a battery sucker. And so as a result, later versions of Android have started to deprecate significantly deprecate and restrict what started services can do. And they've, they've been phased out in terms of these other things called um, jobs and the job scheduler and so on. And, then the, and I should also point out that activities, services, and broadcast receivers are all either brought into existence and or interacted with via something called the intents, which we talked about earlier. So intents are used to, to start things up and to interact between activities, services, and broadcast receivers. The fourth type of component is called a content provider. And this is used to manage access to structured data, and it also provides certain data security mechanisms if you need to share stuff but only share data in a secure way. And the purpose of content providers and something else called content resolvers, which is kind of the, the proxy that's used to get to the content providers by different apps, those can be used to make data that an app um, creates visible to other apps that might want to use it. And so the way this works under the hood is it uses something called the content provider interface, which gives you the canonical CRUD operations, CRUD being create, uh, read, update, and delete. So insert, I guess it's kind of like create. Read is kind of like query. Update is update, delete is delete. So these are the CRUD operations. And that's a way of being able to access structured storage. So examples of things that use content providers would be things like um, keeping track of your search history in the browser. So that when you start to type in a, uh, a string to the browser's um, window, you know, the URL and search window, it can say, aha, you've already asked for this before. I'll go ahead and, and complete it for you because I already know what you're looking for, you know, recent searches kinds of things. Um, other stuff that uses content providers would be your contacts, 
would be your calendar events, would be your SMS, MMM, uh, MMS messages, you know, the database of all those things to keep track of the history of those things. And as you're probably familiar, you can go in and search. I mean, if, if uh, Google is one thing, it's a search company, right? And so they would obviously optimize very heavily for search. So there's some search that's optimized for your phone, obviously a whole lot of other search that's optimized across the internet, and content providers are the means by which that information is stored locally in a structured way so you can get access to it. And there's also some really cool stuff in the content provider uh, feature set that allows content resolvers to be notified when things change. So if something is updated, then you can notify everybody and they can update their views. A lot of really cool stuff. So it's basically data management, structured data management. Uh, we're not going to say a whole heck of a lot more about this stuff here, but if you're curious, I have that specialization I was telling you about before, that Coursera MOOC specialization, and we've got uh, MOOC 2 and MOOC 3 of the five course specialization cover these topics in detail. So intense activities and broadcast receivers are covered in MOOC 2, and services and content providers are covered in MOOC 3 of that specialization. So we, again, we don't have time to do that here, but it's a really cool topic, and I think you'd have a, go, a good time learning more about it. All right, so that's the end of the components. 